Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's 30-minute webinar. My name is Jamie Charleston and I'm the Senior Sales Engineer at Cloud Linux. Cloud Linux is the name behind a range of tools helping enterprise companies keep their Linux-based systems secure, compliant, stable, and profitable. Today we are presenting You Need Live Patching to Achieve SOC 2 Compliance together with André Tararik, Compliance and AWS Infrastructure Specialist at Affinity Insurance, Claudine Morales, Partner Solution Architect at AWS, and I'm your host. During the next 30 minutes, you'll learn the best practices and use cases of data protection and vulnerability management from Amazon Web Services, Kernel Care, and Infinity Insurance. Learn more about fundamental concepts of AWS security and how they ensure compliance of your infrastructure. Learn how Kernel Care makes SOC 2 compliance easier. And get your questions answered by Cloud Linux and AWS experts during the live Q&A session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel or post a question on Twitter with the hashtag AWS Kernel Care. I'll bring them up for the Q&A session at the end. Please note this webinar will be recorded. If you're uncomfortable with that, feel free to drop off the call and listen to the recording later. We'll provide a link to it in our blog and social media. Let's get started. Again, my name is Jamie Charleston, Senior Sales Engineer at Kernel Care, and my presentation is You Need Live Patching to Achieve SOC 2 Compliance. I'm going to talk about the SOC 2 general ideas, how Kernel Care is applicable and connected with SOC 2 certification success, how Kernel Care works and ensures your system's security, privacy, and availability, and keeping them up to date. You can ask your questions during my presentation using the GoToWebinar control panel, as well as by mentioning the hashtag AWS Kernel Care on Twitter. I'll bring them up at our question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So let's get started. I'm sure you already know that SOC 2 is a procedures system and data management certification developed by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. It is a sign of good data governance and a way of getting a well-regarded quality certification. SOC stands for System and Organization Controls and is a public declaration by an enterprise to its customer saying that your data is secure and private, the system processing the data is available, and the system maintains the integrity and confidentiality of your data. These are the five categories that arrange a large number of trust service criteria, a set of principles forming the backbone of a SOC 2 audit report. These guide external auditors, helping them to measure the effectiveness of the policies and systems an organization uses to execute its objectives. SOC 2 has become a popular route to compliance because it is pragmatic, flexible, and voluntary. It sidesteps legal considerations and their associated expense. You can choose which part of an organization it is for. You can choose which systems it is for. This particularly appeals to organizations offering SaaS, e-commerce, web hosting, and similar public-facing data-centric services, giving them an adaptable, scalable, and cost-effective way to become compliant. So where does Kernel Care fit in with SOC 2? I'm glad you asked. To obtain a SOC 2 certificate, you need to comply with a lot of things. Clearly, many of them are outside the scope of Kernel Care specialty. But among all of the point of focus in your SOC 2 audit, there are two extremely critical items you need to manage to obtain and maintain a SOC 2 certification. You need to perform regular vulnerability scans of your infrastructure, and you must always keep your system up to date. Now, such tasks are usually performed during planned service maintenance cycles, which may be once a month or even once a quarter. Does that sound familiar to you? Please type yes or no in the question box on your GoToWebinar control panel so that we can see how many of you regard rebooting servers as a real hassle. So let's look at the hassles of rebooting. This is quite understandable. Rebooting your server fleet is a pain. It is often scheduled for the darkest part of the night, corresponding to low points of service usage. It requires minutes of downtime, and it can take up to 15 minutes for server performance to stabilize and warm up. This is not something you want to do often, right? Yet, anytime there's a security vulnerability in the kernel, a server should be rebooted. Avoiding server reboots to apply kernel patches 
is actually putting your system at risk of being exploited. For instance, the latest set of microarchitectural data sampling vulnerabilities, better known as zombie load, fallout, and riddle, affect almost all Intel processors made since 2011. If you have unpatched Intel CPUs in your servers, bad actors can theoretically steal a lot of sensitive data from you. To protect from this set of vulnerabilities, you should have applied the Linux kernel patches as soon as possible to avoid systems being exploited. But how would you do that if you have already been preparing for upcoming reboot cycle for a few months, or you need to wait until the next one? What I'm trying to say is that waiting for the next server reboot cycle to apply the latest Linux kernel vulnerability patches is making you insecure and non-compliant. And this is where kernel care comes into play. How kernel care works. Our kernel team monitors security mailing lists. When they see a security vulnerability that affects one of our supported kernels, they prepare a patch for it. The patch is compiled and deployed onto our patch repository. The kernel care agent running on your server periodically checks with our patch repository to see if there are any you need. If there is a new patch available for your kernel, the agent downloads it and applies it to the running kernel without the need of rebooting your server fleet. For advanced users, to apply the update, a special kernel care kernel module is used. It allocates kernel memory and loads new secure code in there. It freezes all processes in a safe state mode for a brief moment in time. It is critical to apply the changes safely to make sure that the CPU doesn't execute the original code block right at the moment we will switch to a new version. That is why kernel care module takes the original functions and modifies them to jump to new secure code, making sure the vulnerable code never runs again. All processes are unfrozen and processing continues. All of this is done in a fraction of a millisecond. I'm running out of my allotted time, so let me sum it up. If you're planning or in the process of obtaining a SOC 2 certification, and particularly if the scope of the audit is security and privacy, you need to ensure that your systems are up to date. That means making sure they all have the Linux kernel security patches applied without interrupting services. For that, you should consider Kernel Care's automatic Linux kernel live patching service. If you want to go deeper and have a technical demonstration, please contact us at sales at kernelcare.com. If you'd like to try Kernel Care free for 30 days, visit kernelcare.com free trial. Now we will turn time over to Claudine Morales, Solution Architect at Amazon Web Services. Claudine will cover fundamental concepts of AWS security essentials and best practices. Hello everyone, my name is Claudine Morales. I'm a Partner Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services based in Seattle. First of all, I'd like to thank the team at Cloud Linux, who is an AWS Partner Network Advanced Technology Partner, for inviting me to be a part of today's webinar. For my presentation today, I'm going to cover some fundamental concepts in AWS security, as well as some general best practices. I'd like to start by saying that at AWS, security is job zero. It will always be our top priority, and that's true to our internal culture as an organization where every employee is responsible for upholding security standards in their day-to-day -day and is empowered to report and escalate security issues if needed. And that is also true to the extensive security technologies that we offer our customers as a cloud provider. Uh, to respond to the compliance requirements of our most demanding customers, we have worked to achieve compliance with many certification and accreditation programs, including global programs such as PCI DSS, SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3. Uh, we're compliant with U.S. government-wide programs like NIST, FedRAMP, FISMA, and a number of assurance programs that are recognized in Asia Pacific and Europe as well. Because we manage these programs in our infrastructure, 
we can help you more easily meet your compliance requirements. If you have any compliance requirements for your workload or want to know more about our compliance programs, visit the AWS compliance page, which you can see on your screen right here. How we view security on AWS. The fact is AWS alone cannot achieve all of your security and compliance objectives. It is a shared responsibility. AWS controls and manages certain components, but you as a customer have to do your part. And this is why it's great that you guys are listening in today to learn more about kernel care and the benefits it offers when it comes to managing the security of your Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud or EC2 instances that you have running on AWS. You have your share of duties to protect your AWS environment. The AWS Shared Responsibility Model defines who is responsible for securing which components. The orange layers are what AWS has access to and what AWS controls and manages. We refer to that portion as security of the cloud. So this includes our global infrastructure, meaning AWS regions, which are geographic locations where we cluster our data centers, our availability zones, which are the clusters of data centers that we have within a particular AWS region, and our edge locations. Edge locations are what Amazon CloudFront, which is our content delivery network service, uses to deliver content to end users across the globe with lower latencies. Today, the AWS cloud spans 64 availability zones across 21 geographic regions around the world. And our global network of edge locations consists of 166 points of presence with 155 edge locations and 11 regional edge caches in 65 cities across 29 countries. AWS is also responsible for designing and building our services securely. The blue layers, on the other hand, are what the customer has access to and what they control and manage. So that is your security in the cloud. This includes selecting which services you use, building your application securely, defining who or what gets access to which resources in your AWS infrastructure, what data you store and where you store that data. This also includes how you encrypt that data. You are always in full control and ownership of your data on AWS. We offer a huge set of services and features to help you with your encryption needs for data at rest or data in transit, services like AWS Key Management Service and AWS Cloud HSM enable you to create and manage encryption keys that you can use to protect your data on AWS. Now, AWS does not have access into the customer account the blue part, and the customer does not have access into the underlying part, which are the orange layers. And I thought that was very important to point out. So I've mentioned some of the security components that you as the customer need to manage when using Amazon EC2 as part of the shared responsibility model, but I'd like to share some more general best practices that will help you better secure the EC2 instances that you are running on AWS. And I've already covered best practices around access and privilege in the previous slide, but it's also best practice to have a baseline for your EC2 security configuration and use that baseline to assess every EC2 instance that you have running in your environment. You should have logging enabled on all of your EC2 instances that you are running so that you can collect configuration data on each of them. This allows you to flag and act on any deviations from your baseline. It's also a good idea to implement a change management strategy for rolling out necessary changes on your EC2 fleet, including changes to security groups, configuration changes for applications you have running in your EC2 instances, software upgrades, patching, 
it's also critical that you have some sort of audit logging mechanism in place to track the changes done on your AWS environment. You can use AWS CloudTrail to track many of the activities across your AWS account and AWS Config to monitor and evaluate configurations for your AWS resources. I'd like to encourage you to learn more about the AWS Shared Responsibility Model and download the AWS Security Best Practices white paper using the respective links that you see on your screen. I hope this was helpful. Thank you again to the Cloud Linux team for having me here today, and thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Claudine. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel or post a question on Twitter with the hashtag AWS Kernel Care. Now please welcome André Tarali, Compliance and AWS Infrastructure Specialist at Affinity Insurance. He will share the story of how Kernel Care made their SOC 2 compliance journey easier. Hello, I'm André Talarik and I am a Java developer at Affinity Insurance in Warsaw. We do software consultancy and software development for insurance industry. I'm going to tell you why we use kernel care and where it's helped us with SOC 2 compliance. But, be but before that, I'll tell you a bit about the company. We started almost 20 years ago selling the Affinity Insurance System, a Java-based software application for brokers and cover holders. They use it to provide instant quotas and calculate premiums for policies. It also, it also has sales and management information components, everything you need to run an online insurance business. We have clients in 14 countries, so everything runs in the cloud on Amazon AWS, handling millions of quotas per year and hundreds of thousands of policies. The insurance sector has to deal with a ton of data. Much of it is personal data, so the system handling it must be watertight and secure. We don't have a problem with that, only with proving to our customers that their data is safe. We did it by going down the compliance route. I'll talk more about that in a second. First, I want to say that we have a second company, a London-based brokerage business, and yes, they do use Affinity software. That means we have seen things from two sides, both as service providers and as service users. So, here's how we got to learn about kernel care. Some of our customers started asking, do we have any compliance certifications, specifically SOC 2? SOC 2 is an audit report. It's popular in the US where we have most of our business activity. When you've been audited, it is proof that you have good data governance. We thought it would be a good idea to get this, and we did, but it took some work. There is a lot of things you have to comply with. One of them is that you have to do regular vulnerability scans on your infrastructure. Another is that you have to keep your system up to date with the latest software. That worried me because I knew it would mean more system admin work. I started to think how to automate it, did some googling, and I came across kernel care. I should say first, we do use clustering on the application layer, and we could upgrade nodes without any interruptions. But our gateway and database nodes, they can be clustered. They are on Send OS, which gets two or three critical kernel updates a month. To get SOC 2, we'd have to install updates as they come in. They would mean downtime because of the reboots. Back then, we didn't know you could avoid it with something called life patching. We were, we were focusing on the compliance aspects, so it took a while to see where kernel patching fits in. But I could see the trend with the vulnerabilities like Spectre and Meltdown giving us headaches, and I realized that kernel patching has to be automated. So, we installed kernel care and started trying it out. We tested it, but to be honest, it wasn't very exciting. It just did what it's supposed to. When it looked like it was installing patches properly, we rolled it out to our production servers. That was about a year ago, and then part of SOC 2 isn't a problem anymore. Okay, I'm almost out of time. Let me sum up. 
I guess for us things changed when we stopped thinking purely about customers and started uh, thinking about their data as well. Uh, SOC 2 is a great way of gaining trust with customers, but it's not the certificate that protects you, it's the tools and processes you have adopted. So I see it like this. We got kernel care because of compliance and we got compliance because of security. Handling customer data can be a burden and unprotected data is a liability. And as you know, we don't like liabilities in the insurance world. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Andre. Uh, we'll go ahead and take questions for the rest of the webinar. Uh, again, please use the hashtag AWS Kernel Care in Twitter or post your questions into the question box within your go to um, webinar <laughs> control panel. Uh, some of the questions we've got coming in uh, Does Kernel Care patch? Uh, have patches for older kernels. Uh, yes, we support patching of Linux kernels on distributions even after end of life. We are behind a firewall. How do we apply kernel patches uh, behind a firewall? That's a great question. Uh, we have a lot of enterprise organizations, so we have a solution for that. It's called ePortal. Uh, it is a patch server that runs internally in your location. Uh, behind your firewall with the ability to connect to our master patch server. It acts as a bridge between the internal patch server and the main kernel care patch server. Uh, it's perfect for staging and production environments, which needs a strict isolation from external networks, uh, it's, uh, or which uh, requires stricter control uh, over the patches that are being applied. That said, we can still use an automated deployment uh, to distribute the kernel care agent uh, to your servers. Okay, how do I deploy kernel care if I have tens of thousands of servers? Again, the overall installation process and registration is extremely simple. As Ange was saying, it's, it's not life-changing in the way that services process. Our installation is easy, quick, and efficient. So we have the ability to allow you to use and integrate with tools such as Ansible, Puppet, or uh, other popular automation tools. How many vulnerabilities does Kernel Care patch on average? So with that, we patch all Linux kernel vulnerabilities and sometimes bugs and hardware vulnerabilities, uh, including such services uh, severe ones as SAC panic, zombie load, meltdown, riddle, fallout, and others. For the last two years, we have actually patched uh, more than 600 vulnerabilities. We clone VMs in Amazon. Uh, what happen? What will happen when kernel care uh, on the with kernel care on a cloned machine? Will it work? Uh, what happens with my original kernel care license on it? Great question. So your initial license will remain unchanged. For the new machine, you'll just need to run the re-register uh, utilizing the kernel care tool. And uh, that will recognize and add it and your patches will start to flow. Could you deliver kernel bug fixes as a CVE patch uh, to avoid reboot? This is not what we do normally, but sometimes we do patch critical kernel bugs if, uh, if those uh, bugs are severe. Do you support ARM chipset patching? We know a lot of people are moving to ARM. So with that, we have recently released the ARM chipset patching support and can now protect your Internet of Things devices and hardware from Linux kernel vulnerabilities. We have actually gone through the process and success successfully passed the proof of concept on ARM-based servers in the EC2 Amazon Linux cloud and have created a customized solution for you, depend and we can create a customized solution for you depending on what uh, distribution you currently use. For instance, Yagato and Ubuntu Core. Okay, it looks like we've covered all of our questions. Claudine, Ange, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, appreciate everyone for being here.
Just a reminder, we do have a 30-day kernel care trial on our website. Feel free to sign up. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us. And again, if you would like to work with one of our sales agents and have a more customized demo and discussion, please contact sales at kernelcare.com. So thank you very much for your time and attendance today, and we look forward to hearing from you.